So this talk is about chapter 7 and 15. Chapter 7 is about the environment and health, and chapter 15 is about natural disasters and complex humanitarian emergencies. We want to describe the environmental threats to health, review the burden of environmental exposure and methods by public health nurses to decrease exposure, and also describe the impact of disasters on populations and pub how public health nurses respond. The key concept of environmental health is efforts that are concerned with preventing disease, death, and disability by reducing exposure to adverse environmental conditions and promoting behavior change. This table, Table 7-2, uh, talks about typical environmental health issues uh, things such as exposure to naturally occurring toxic substances. Um, they have here poisoning from arsenic, manganese, fluorides. In my area, um, in my basement, I have to have radon um, uh, mitigation because of the naturally um, um, natural release of radon from the rocks and from the ground and so it gets into my basement and um, could affect uh, rates of lung cancer in my family. So we have a system that pulls out the, the air and keeps the basement free and, and so decreases my exposure to radon. But we have uh, globally the climate change and ozone depletion. We have vehicle emissions in the community and then again we have in the household uh, conditions where um, sanitation can be poor uh, depending on where we live. So we have household air pollution, um, people in parts of the world that have to burn fuel and that even includes in our United States people who have wood stoves who rely on wood uh, to heat and to cook um, can put uh, pollution into the air in their homes. Uh, women are especially exposed to this because they spend time in front of the stove cooking. It could cause issues in, of conjunctivitis, upper respiratory infection, can put people at risk for long-term associations, cardio-obstructive uh, pulmonary disease, and um, lung cancers. So we have to be aware, and even um, new houses can have um, off-put of um, uh, formaldehydes and benzenes coming off of that beautiful new carpet smell and the smell of new wood. Um, all of those are gases that are being released from products that were treated. So we have to be aware of that even in developed nations. Water and sanitation and hygiene. Um, when we fail, fail to properly dispose of human waste, then pathogens can be spread um, whether it's through the oral fecal route, worms, or um, waterborne pathogens. And um, having water available to wash hands is another method of sanitation that's very important. Uh, when we have people having to pull water out of wells in buckets, the amount of water is limited, and um, that may limit um, sanitary practices and hygiene. I wanted to show you these pictures. This is a quarantine building and cholera beds, which is um, cholera is waterborne and can be oral fecal um, spread. Um, it produces copious, copious amounts of diarrhea so bad that um, people cannot get up and go to the bathroom. It just runs out of them. So they have beds with these holes cut in them and with a bucket underneath so that the person can just uh, stay in bed. And again, you can imagine as uh, time um, goes by, they're weakened from the, the loss of uh, fluids and electrolytes through the diarrhea so that they they um, just laying in the bed and, and letting it go helps, but hydration becomes very important. And so this building is where they were quarantined in 2010. Um, an aid worker coming from another country with, I believe, UN forces brought cholera to Haiti after the um, they had the earthquake and then they had the hurricane and then they had this uh, tragedy. And um, within this a small town in Haiti, um, there were many children that had lost parents from the cholera. But a simple, simple 
um, way to prevent it is to have um, simple latrines and uh, this was an NGO who was building these cement structures uh, the and then um, the family would dig the hole and then the 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 plate of cement with the hole in it and then this tube where people would sit on and use um, the the latrine with walls around it with a door for privacy and to encourage people to use it and uh, that that was brought in by the UN forces after this cholera epidemic they also got a water system to that part of the country um, because it was um, was brought in by these aid workers and so this community actually after the tragedy um, did get um, a water source and did get latrines built to help uh, prevent future issues. Um, these uh, hygiene and sanitation and water and the uh, problems in the environment can uh, be averted and um, can save money in the sense of dailies so that people remain strong and do not die. Um, but you can see how having a house connection to that spigot, for example in Haiti, how much uh, money was saved because people would uh, have a clean water from a clean system and have it right in their house and be able to wash their hands and be able to wash their clothes and flush the toilet and things like that. And you can see um, how how much disability is averted. We have future air and water challenges that public health nurses should be aware of with population growth that requires the growth, the use of uh, diapers and uh, plastics and products. We have to manage our pollution. We have to look for ways to recycle. Public health nurses can encourage that. Uh, we need community-based approaches to reach rural populations uh, so that um, they're not burning down forests for uh, land, but doing it more efficiently and um, so that they have access to water and sanitation and latrines and information for remaining healthy. I wanted to talk about disasters also, and again, this is chapter 15, but it becomes very important because nurses will be working with people as they recover from a disaster. We've seen the disasters recently of the hurricanes in Texas and Florida and in Puerto Rico, and we know that people suffer because they don't have their medications, they don't have uh, their lights, they don't have their water systems. Water systems can be easily polluted during flooding and during hurricanes. And so um, recovering from a disaster requires public health nurses to be on top of their game to help people. So we can have disasters that are natural or human-made um, disasters. Uh, they can be very expensive. Um, with lost property, with lives lost, with um, providers of the family lost. There can be man-made disasters also that are uh, related to chemical, biologic, radiologic, nuclear, and explosive uh, disasters. And you can imagine um, these in terrorism and in war. So the role of the nurse in disaster response is to be an advocate for the community, to call the governor to get the services, to request the services, request housing services, uh, medication, to bring people together, to uh, begin to understand uh, or have prepared reports on the community resources that are available when a disaster strikes. Public health nurses can triage. Uh, if you can imagine a tornado going through a community and the the um, bits of pieces, broken glass that fly and people get injured from, uh, so triaging those cases, um, doing case finding and referring people who are men uh, suffering mentally from the trauma of the disaster or um, diabetics who are in need of um, insulin and things like that. Um, becomes very important to talk about uh, prevention of infection and contamination and so health education becomes very important talking about whether your refrigerator that's been off for seven days you should not be eating any of the meat and the eggs in that refrigerator um, you know is your freezer affected 
um, how should you clean up. Uh, when we saw Puerto Rico, we know that with the flooding that came after the hurricane, uh, people were walking through the waters and, and thinking about what was in that water. There was a lot of, um, of bacteria and, um, and, vi and um, viral um, uh, issues that affected the people when they were walking through. They had to keep walking because they had to go get things, but uh, then they should have uh, showered afterwards or avoided certain areas, uh, possibly if there was somebody with a boat to prevent them from going into the water. And then surveillance, again, watching for cases, uh, active surveillance, looking for cases of people who are sick with um, communicable diseases. Personal protective equipment becomes very important if it's a bioterrorism uh, event. Uh, skin protection becomes very important if it's a chemical or um, or an explosive um, event. Respiratory protection becomes important again if it's chemical and then monitoring devices become important if it's radiologic or nuclear. So terrorism, understanding that it's the unlawful use of force or violence against people and property specifically to intimidate or coerce a population or a government um, to further political or social objectives. The nurse's role is to be alert for signs of possible terrorist activity and be prepared to follow a disaster plan and provide direct care if a, a terrorism disaster occurs. So primary prevention for disaster means educating people by preparing go bags, meaning if a per, if families are educated in preparing a go bag, that means they would be ready to move in the case of an emergency. Education programs for shelter in place, if the call goes out that says stay in your home, do not go out, close your windows, turn off your air conditioning, then families are prepared to stay in. Uh, public health nurses should work with drills uh, for disasters and then have a disaster plan in place uh, to work with uh, communities. Secondary prevention or screening after an exposure, assessing for rates of infection, educating the population about symptoms that may occur as um, infections may develop as sanitation decreases, monitoring morbidity and mortality. And then tertiary prevention is uh, looking out for the risk for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, rehabbing for survivors that need it, mitigation, which means fixing um, areas that need fixing so that when the next uh, big storm c occurs, then um, that tree is not going to fall on those wires and cause problems. And monitoring of people who've been in a disaster should go on for about two years, especially things like a radiologic um, event. Thank you very much for listening.